Welcome into Hawk Talk this week. The University of North Dakota into the 2014 field of the FCS playoffs. Jack Michaels, radio play-by-play -play man here as the Fighting Hawks get set for a trip to Weber State. Uh, tough first round draw for North Dakota having to go on the road. I know some disappointed they have to go on the road, but that's the way the ball bounces. I guess so. I would love to have seen the conversation and the bidding uh, process on that because North Dakota, if they, uh, do, they do many things well. One thing, they, they bid to get some home field in postseason, so I'm a little... I'm a little shocked at North Dakota's on the road, but it is what it is. It's time to go see the Wasatch Mountain Range and, and eat at far better ice cream and see what Stewart <laughs> Stadium holds on a Saturday afternoon. It's going to be a tough contest. Uh, having done games in the big sky over the years, mm -hmm. and, and Weber has, has – uh, UND's been close in that, in that stadium before, but they've fallen short. So I'm sure the guys are excited that they're in, you know, and, uh, and now it's, it's – uh, not repeat kind of the game they had last week. Yeah, speaking of that, and I think, again, talking to the coordinators last week, you talking to coaches, it was going to be a challenge going in there, matching their physicality for 60 minutes in the Fargo Dome. Had some things go wrong early, and as we've seen, things can turn into an avalanche in a hurry. But still some things you can take away from that game and say, okay, we have some things we have to work on to make sure we're prepared and ready to go in the playoffs. Yeah, I think this season, Brian, and you know as well as anyone, I, I think one thing for North Dakota is the resiliency that North Dakota has shown. When they've given up points and chased some points, they've been able to find a way to balance games out and, uh, and, and not Saturday. You know, when you're chasing three scores – it was just very tough setting. Yes, they could have had a scoop and score. Yes, they could have had a pick six for a, for a touchdown. Uh, yes, a ball hit a shoulder pad and popped up for a completion. Yes, they had a fumble overturned. Proper call mm -hmm. to start the second half. Would that have led to something? All these little things, and, and you can't chase points. Can't chase points against uh, the Bison in Fargo, and you certainly can't chase points against the Wildcats in, in Ogden. Yeah, and that's, this is going to be a challenge, certainly going on the road again. Another team that really good on third down defensively, one of the best – passing defenses in the nation, a really good rushing defense. They've been known to be real physical in their front seven. But if you're North Dakota, you say, we saw a physical front seven. We saw a physical offensive line. So we know what we're going to have to do to match that or at least give our best effort over 60 minutes to try to make some things happen. It's a great point because, um, you know, after the South Dakota State game, you said, well, they're not going to see guys up front like that, you know, every week. And certainly maybe NDSU obviously is, is big up front. So you're not going to see that. Uh, but you touched on some things that, that you've got to be somewhat concerned about coming from the last game. And, you know, you've got to be able to cover on kickoffs and special teams. And special teams has created a lot of great opportunities. Sean Kostich has done a yeah. – and, and does every year a tremendous job. But you can't let someone get loose. And if you look at, at Abraham Williams, this dude, he's like the second coming of Devin Hester. When you've had four returns for a touchdown in a season – that's a red flag. And he had another one for 100 yards last year. So they've got to be able to cover. Tackling has been, last couple of weeks, somewhat suspect, I think fans would honestly say. So you've got to be able to tackle. So, you know, can North Dakota tackle, cover? I think the offense might be able to put some, despite Weber's defense, as you said, is good. And I think they're only yielding about 18 points a game. You know, they played with Sac State. They played with Montana State. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember calling a game in Logan, Utah, uh, a while back uh, with North Dakota at Utah State and, and a very good program, and they beat Utah State. So this is a team that doesn't yield a lot of points. Uh, it's, it's frightening on special teams, and we haven't gotten to their quarterback, who obviously has put up some big numbers. We'll run a little, but pass a lot. I think maybe six, seven picks on a year. Um, in their house where they give away free tickets for if you have your wild card <laughs> and all faculty get in free. So they want people there at Stewart yeah. Stadium. There's a lot of reasons why, why this can be a tough environment, but I don't know. I think UND can, can shred off what happened in, in Fargo and find a way to collectively get on that airplane, fly into Ogden, and just, you know what, this is it. You lose, you're done. If you win, you move on. It's enough incentive to go out and win a football game. And North Dakota's been resilient after losses. Yes, We've have. seen that this year as well, after it happened at SIU, after it happened certainly against South Dakota State, what happened against NDSU. We will see how the team responds. But... You know, ultimately, they're the third team in from the Valley. There's only three teams from the Valley. Rugged schedule, Northern Iowa, Southern Illinois, Youngstown State on the road. 
So they are battle tested to a certain degree. Maybe not the value ha- what it's been in the past, but still, right. we know how physical of a league this is week in and week out. Yeah, I mean, you know, it started out in Lincoln, Nebraska. You know, tripped to Flagstaff, and and they found ways to win that game down against Northern Arizona. I get it. NAU didn't have a, a great season, but you know, you mentioned Carbondale, Youngstown, Ohio, Fargo, North Dakota. These are not these aren't places you would choose to go and play <laughs> yes. if you just want to have some fun, but. Uh, you know, they, they beat Youngstown. You know, they beat Northern Arizona. They had Nebraska, you know, in that flux a little bit in the third quarter. What happened in, at, at the Fargo Dome, obviously North Dakota State dominated a, a lot of part of that game. But, you know, I, I still like this team's chances. They're, they're freaky tough to put a finger on, Brian. Yeah, they are. You know, I, I drive to the venue, and I'm sure you do, and I get in on the way I'm thinking in my head, okay. What's, what's going to happen today? We today? don't know. It was going to be efficient. That offense is going <laughs> to just go down the field. Are they going to tip a ball and pick it off? Or is going is C.J. Siegel going to do something today that's going to be phenomenal? You know, is Shandowski just going to going to eat someone actually on the field, just <laughs> chew into them, and then take them down? And is Ben McDebo going to be like he was in the middle and, and, and get sacked? Or is it going to be one of those grinders where they're going to score, you're going to score, they're going to score, you're going to get a block punt, <laughs> and then you're going to score, and you're going to... I don't know, but, you know, Forrest Gump said box of chocolates. Was that the thing? Yeah. Sometimes it is. You're not quite sure which one is going to be. Bubba Schwager, I'm sure, would love the old plane. Let's just line up, play football, and win it. Yep, we'll see how it shakes we'll out. At least North Dakota in the playoffs now, three of the last four years, and an opportunity on the road. At Weber State, Jack, thanks for stopping by. Good to be on, Brian, as always. Yes, sir.